good morning i am dr k p renaka devi associate professor department of biotechnology today we are going to see in animal biotechnology the topic cell synchronizing cell senescence and apoptosis so in this topic we are going to discuss about what is cell synchronization senescence characteristics of senescent cells causes of cellular senescence measurement of cellular senescence and apoptosis so coming to what is cell synchronizing it is a process by where the cells in a culture at different stages of the cell cycle are brought to the same phase so the cell will synchronizing it is a well vital process and we can study the cell processing through the cell cycle where we can identify the data how the cell relying on a single cell experiment so this type of cell synchronizing we can categorize into two groups like physical fractionization and chemical blockade so here in physical fraction we have a process of continuous dividing of the cells and it can be separated by two phase of the population that is based upon the character like cell density cell size and the presence of cell surface epitopes that can be marked by antibodies and when the light scatter on the fluorescent emissions we can label the cells and we can find out the morphological and the surface marker where the cell cycle and the triad can be used to separate by different phases so we have two common methods and we can identify how the senescence or the condition where the cell process with all age or the loss of ability of the cell that is dividing and the growth as the cell grows in a culture they become old due to aging so it cannot further proliferate so at the end of the proliferation or the life span of the cell which it comes to an end we call it as senescence so the cellular sense cannot grow further so in this state the cell cannot grow or divide so it will lose all its metabolic activities and leads to death so this process we call it as senescence so coming to the characteristic of these cells the cell has the ability or they will lose their ability to divide and the cells are larger than the normal cells or it cannot that is certain molecules where it secretes in normal cells and they do not secrete in a smaller quantities also so we have certain examples of this molecule like senescence associated with beta galactosidase tumor suppressor cells and growth factors so this example gives you how the characteristic of senescence works in a cellular metabolism and also we have some uh, innovation that is we have immune response and how it reinforce with all the tumor promotions or inflammation so we can find out uh, the various activities of how the cell enforcement has been come so what are the causes of the cell senescence so mainly there is a telomer erosion is widely known to cause for the senescence so we have cell damage or the telomerase or the sequence of dna and this consists of dna sequence of repeated nucleotides so during the replication process occurs they may lose some part of dna so at each replication the chromosome will be shortened and they lose an important genetic information so at this point the cells cannot undergo or we cannot find the point and we can see how the cell undergo a dna damage response so they is no longer division that occurs so the dna double strand breaks and leads to dna damage and also consequently makes the cell senescent so the presence of mitogenic signals and the reactive oxygen species leads to dna damage and cell death occurs so the abnormal expression of protein occurs and the presence of signaling molecules alter your cellular functions which we call it as cellular stress then we can measure the cellular senescence by means of direct measurement of cell number or we can determine the rna and dna content or we can estimate the dna and protein concentration so the direct measurement of senescent cell is rather considered to be difficult so some indirect measures like loss of metabolic activity lack of labeled precursor uh, thymidine incorporation to uh, dna and histochemical techniques can be taken so how it is associated with beta galactosidase activity as we can find out by the elevation of the enzyme and also how the cell has an increase in the cell size we can find so the cell enters a permanent non dividing state we can measure and we can culture and we can find out through this galactosidase beta assay how the endogenous uh, beta galactosidase and the normal cells between the senescent cells 
and how far uh, the intracellular protein uh, molecules has been expressed in this particular cells we can find out. Then coming to apoptosis, we call this as a programmed cell death and occurs in a multicellular organisms. So the death of the cell is initiated by several signaling molecules, either by external environment, and it can be result or inheritance cellular mechanism, which finally leads to self-destruction of the cell. So this apoptosis characters will change the cell and also it includes bubbling, cell shrinkage, nuclear fragmentation, chromatin condensation, chromosomal DNA fragmentation and global mRNA decay. So the cell activates a series of molecular events that cause a degradation of cellular constituent and also it will find a place where the nucleus condensation forms or bubbles or how the apoptotic body or the partition that occurs into the cytoplasm and nucleus into the apoptotic bodies occurs it leads to phagocytosis. So this is a general mechanism. So coming to the morphology of the apoptotic cells, the cell undergo apoptosis showing a series of characteristic morphological changes. So we can find that the cell shrinkage around occurs become, uh, and also we can see the protein is a cytoskeleton by means of the caps enzyme. So cytoplasm appears dense and also the organelles appear tightly packed. So chromatin undergo condensation into compact patches <clears throat> against a nuclear envelope in a process known as Phycnosis. So the nuclear envelope become discontinuous into the DNA inside the cellular fragment in a process which can be referred as karyohexis. So the nuclear breakage and the chromatin bodies of the nucleosomal units will occur. So due to this, we can find whether there is any degradation of DNA has been occurs or not. So coming to the apoptotic cell activity, we can see three major steps. That is one is membrane bubbling. That is, the cell uh, shows the irregular buds that is called bubbles. And initially, this smaller surface bubbles, and these can grow into a larger and so-called dynamic membrane. So regular bubbling, like uh, RHO-associated coiled or coil-containing protein kinase 1 can be find out. So how the formation of membrane protrusion also we can see under specific conditions. We can see different types of long, thin extension of the cell membrane, which is called a cell membrane protrusion we can see. So the three types has been described like microtubule spikes, apoptoria and beaded apoptoria we can find out. So this helps us to find out how the importance of the component membrane channels involved in the formation of the membrane protrusions that occurs in the apoptotic cells. So the external fragmentation so we can identify the cell breakage apart into the multiple vessel called apoptoic body undergo phagocytosis process and the plasma membrane protrusion may help bringing the apoptoic body which is closer to phagocytosis. So what are the reasons means we have in situ apoptosis for proper development and also we have certain destructions of cells that post uh, threats uh, to the integrity of the organisms. So there is removal of cell during development and formation of finger and toes and feet, um, feet is requires the removal of cells and tissue between them. So the apoptosis process helps in removing of certain cells and tissue. So destruction of cells also have some post threat to <clears throat> integrity of the cells of the organism. So programmed cell death or it is need to destroy and remove the cells that may otherwise damage the organism. So this process is necessary to maintain our cellular integrity. So what are the reasons uh, here for in situ apoptosis? So it may be leads to birth defects and also during uh, the course of embryonic development, if there are uh, they are not destroyed, they may result in birth defects also. So autoimmune pr uh, preservation, like uh, prevention, we can go for cell immune system after their immune uh, functions undergo apoptosis, like rheumatoid arthritis is an example. Then viral infections, cell infected with virus are destroyed by apoptosis to avoid viral contamination and prevent infections also. And next, to kill tumor cells, to eliminate the pre-cancer cells or to kill cancer cells to avoid uh, the further uh, proportions to form. So these are the reasons for in situ apoptosis. So this is the two types. We have eccentric pathway and intercytic pathway. So here the eccentric the sing uh, signal is received from outside the cell and uh, it will 
instructing it to commit the programmed cell death, where interseric pathway, uh, it is triggered by some stress or the damage of the cells to be occurred. So this may occur if the cell is no longer need or if it is in diseased condition. Where in the intersonic pathway, DNA damage, oxygen deprivation and other stress will affect our cells. So how to measure uh, this apoptosis? We can go for either microbial observation, determination of ADP, ATP ratio or tunnel assay or we can go for DNA laddering test. So microscopic observation clearly explains how the dead cells around the dense bodies which can be identified under phase contrast microscope and we can find out the fragment chromatin, which can be detected by the conventional staining techniques. Where by measuring ADP and ATP, we can see the growth arrest and the elevation of ADP occurs. So this ratio will give you uh, how the, uh, it will show the light on your uh, dead cells where we can measure the growth of the apoptosis. And next when we have tunnel assay where uh, we can observe uh, the cells which is mediated by uh, dinucleotide erodine triphosphate nickel labeling and it is very fast and effective method to find out the DNA fragments formed by the endogenous nucleus activity. So the apoptotic nuclei can be identified by fluorescent technique using fluorescent isothiocyanate and also diaminophiladrine. So this components uh, will help us to find out true tunnel assay. Then DNA laddering test uh, gives us the results of finding the Genomic DNA, how it is cleaved into mono or oligosomal DNA fragments. These fragments can be separated by agarose gel electrophoresis and we can detect the nucleosomal fragment of apoptotic cells which gives a characteristic of ladder pattern on the electrophoresis we can identify. So this is uh, how we can see in this picture the DNA damage and repair mechanism that occurs due to cellular sense and how the immune cells is mediated and how it is, has been cleared. And next one we are seeing the difference between apoptosis and senescence. So apoptosis is programmed cell death, where senescence is the deterioration with age. So apoptosis helps in balancing the cell number integrity and constant rate, where senescence helps in aging process. So chromosomal condensation is a hallmark here, where here we have the irreversible arrest of cellular proliferation. So we can see how the physiological and pathological uh, gets stimulates where we have the senescent oxidative DNA damage, mitochondrial DNA damage and altered genetic expression and telomeric erosion has been occurred. So in apoptosis, we can see the intracellular proteolytic mechanism by the enzyme caps where here senescence we can regulate by genes involved in particular senescence activity. So from this, we now we have understand how to find out the difference between senescence apoptosis and how... Uh, we can uh, find uh, what are the DNA that has been damaged and how the fragmentation has been occurred by various uh, techniques. I think this session is um, clear for you. So thank you.